Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. As you all can see, we are in my backyard today and today my plans are to address this ridiculous ground cover situation I have over here underneath my limelight hydrangeas. I have my bird feeders up here. I love having them up there because I can see this area when I'm inside my kitchen, my dining room, my living room, and I really like looking at the birds. But look at what a mess these birds do to the mulch underneath this, these limelight hydrangeas. It is a mess. I have to come out here all the time with the blower, with the broom, and I have to try and clean it up, and I'm honestly kind of sick of it. So I have been planning on putting some type of ground cover underneath these limelight hydrangeas. That's my plan because I feel like if I get it um, dense enough, then that will, one, be able to block out all the weeds from the spillage, I guess you could say, of the bird feeders. But then, two, I wouldn't have to deal with the, all of this mulch kind of coming out into the walkway and just really not looking good. So that's my plan is to put some type of ground cover and I've been pondering over it for quite a while now of what type of ground cover to put underneath uh, my limelight hydrangeas. And there was a couple options that I leaned on. I was thinking about hookahs. Um, I think that that would be really pretty. It would be really good for lighting. I would say this is probably part shade underneath here, especially when it gets to the summertime and everything kind of leafs out. Um, during the winter when the limelights lose all their leaves and the honeysuckle kind of dies back a little bit you know you, it gets a little bit more sun but I would I would I would classify it as part shade so the hookahs would be really pretty there but I don't think I want that dark color I wanted something a little bit more bright that would bring up a, a pop of light uh, to the area so then what I really want to put put there is I really want to put Hakanakloa uh, Japanese forest grass I think that that would be so beautiful I'll see if I can find a picture I found this picture of limelight hydrangeas underplanted with Hakanakloa gorgeous I love the look I love the combination of the two plants together I think it's beautiful However, my dog likes to chew on Japanese forest grass, Hakanakloa. He likes to eat it. I don't know why. I don't, it's not poisonous or anything like that, so it's not a problem. I did try putting a couple of them back here, and then I, every time he came out here, I think when his tummy wasn't feeling good or something like that, he would start chewing on that grass. So I don't even want to bother trying to put it back there, but if, if, if I had no restrictions, that's what I would choose to put underneath here. So having not being able to put the Hoklonokloa, I've landed on Lamium to put underneath uh, the Limelight Hydrangeas. I think it will bring that, that bright pop that I'm looking for that I think the Hoklonokloa will bring. My dog will leave it alone <laughs> and um, I think it will do really, really well in the light requirements that I have. The problem that I have is that I can't get my hands on a ton of it right now. I have a couple that I bought from the garden center a couple weeks ago and they got, I mean, this is really weird. They got infested with ants, which is weird to say. I had them kind of over by my back door and then I, you know, I kept noticing things kind of moving around in them. And then as I was watering them, of course, all the ants were coming out. And so I just threw them on the side of the house. I haven't really been taking care of them. I'm going to try and revive them today. And then I do have some that I'm transplanting from some pots that I had in my front yard and I will be able to put them back here as well. So I don't have anywhere near as much as I want, but what my plan is, my plan is to get all this mulch out here amend the soil, make the soil nice and rich and, um, uh, you know, a, a situation that the lamium will really like so that the lamium hopefully will spread in this area. And then whenever I go to the plant store and I find more lamium, then I will add to this. So I'm going to take the bark out. And yes, that is going to mean that I'm going to be dealing with weeds over the winter and I'm okay with that. It's all for the greater good, trying to get this lamium totally around as ground cover underneath this area. And I think it'll be really pretty. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you all a little bit closer piece at the area I'm talking about. Oh, and then if any of you watched my propagating lamium video, 
this is, <laughs> this is what happened with them. So what happened is I had them inside and then they had white flies. And so there was little white flies flying everywhere. And so I thought, oh, I don't want these inside. So I took them outside and promptly forgot about them. So this was my fault. You can see that I actually did have some um, really good babies. They were actually growing new leaves. This was my fault. And this was because we went on vacation and I completely forgot to tell the house sitter to plant this. And yeah, so... Propagation didn't totally work, but it was more user error than anything else. So yeah, no baby uh, lamium, but <laughs> I probably should do it again. And then that way I can put them uh, over here. But yeah, that is what happened with the propagated lamium. And we have a friend. I think this friend contributes to the mess of the mulch that's all over the place. Don't you? <laughs> yes, you do. And there's my cat running after it. What is it, Dwight? Go get him. Go get him. All right, so here's the area I'm talking about. I was just standing right over there. It's not looking the best. Things are starting to calm down a little bit. Um, it is mid-October at this point, and you can see the limelights are just about done. Um, they're starting to lose their leaves. The honeysuckle's starting to look a little bit tired, and I need to cut that back. Um, and then <laughs> there's mulch everywhere. It's just an absolute mess. So I have to figure something else out. Um, you know, I, I can keep up with this and I can keep coming out here you know once a week and sweeping it back or blowing using the blower to blow it back but I just want to find something that will be a little bit easier and I do think having a ground cover underneath um, these hydrangeas is really going to be a good thing you can see that I get weeds underneath here from the bird seeds um, the bird seed dropping down and everything like that so I think it will be a really really good thing now here's the problem <laughs> I have landscape fabric under here. I have landscape fabric under my whole yard. It's so ridiculous. It was here when we moved in. And so I've tried to plant things underneath here and I've cut holes in it and that's worked terribly. It hasn't worked well at all. Nothing's really spread understandably. So I think what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to do it the right way. I'm going to take all the mulch out. I'm going to remove all the landscape fabric, and then I'm going to amend all the soil so that the lamium has something good to grow in, and I think it'll be really happy. Lamium is hardy zones three through eight. However, it does do well in my zone 9b. I live in Northern California, zone 9b. I just have to make sure I water it enough, and I keep it in enough shade. I have some in my front yard underneath my crepe mar myrtle garden bed. Hi Dwight. Um, and it does well. So I think it'll, I think it'll do really well here. It's definitely a perennial. And then also these limelights, they need a lot of water as well. So I think it's a really good thing, um, to have the lamium that needs the water and then the limelights that need the water. It's, I think it's a good combination here. So I will get started doing this. Let's go.
Okay, so about two hours later, and this is where I'm at. I've got all the landscape fabric out from underneath the limelight hydrangeas. I got all the bark out, which was probably the hardest part. And all I did, uh, you guys saw me, all I did is I kind of just spread it all over um, around there. Then I added that fir bark mulch to kind of loosen up the soil. The soil is actually pretty good here. There are a ton of earthworms when you dig around in there, but I just wanted to add something to it. And that has some, you know, good, yummy, nutrient rich stuff for the soil. So I just mixed it all around with the power planter and then added in this quarter inch emitter tubing that has the emitters every six inches, I think it is. either Yeah, every six inches. So I just kind of spread that around. I think that the limelight hydrangeas will actually love it. And then what I have, this is my really, really sad collection of lamium right now. Here are the four lamium that I bought at the store and then they got infested with ants. The ants are gone, so that's good. What I've been doing is I've been dunking them in water um, and letting the whole thing fill up with water, get rid of all the bubbles, um, and then just kind of letting them sit there and dry out with hopefully trying to get the ants away. You can see they are struggling. They are not happy, but they're still alive. <laughs> so it's not going to be pretty, but I think that they'll survive. I think they'll be fine. And then I have these three right here that I actually took out of um, a container that I had in my front yard. And those are all looking pretty good. I will probably cut them back about halfway um, and then plant them and see how they do. So not looking great. <laughs> not the most beautiful thing, but it's what I can get my hands on right now at this time of year. And that is totally fine. So all I'm going to do is plant these in there. I actually ran out of landscape staples to tack down the emitter tubing over there. I ordered some from Amazon, which is usually where I get mine. I'll link it down below. Um, and they should be here tomorrow. So that's going to look a little messy for a while as well. So this whole project is, is not going to have a very good after picture, but that's that's okay. It's it's stuff that I've been needing to get done and I'm glad that, that I'm glad that I went and I did this even if it doesn't look absolutely perfect picture perfect pristine after I'm done. It'll look great in the springtime. And by the magic of editing, all done. So <laughs> this is really not much to look at at all. It is just nothing to look at, but I want to keep the stems of the lamium down on the soil, the nice, rich, uh, moist soil so that hopefully it will root in other places and it will start spreading across the whole area. This is one of those situations where it's total faith in planting. This doesn't look good. <laughs> it looks like I did something wrong. Oh my goodness. But I really do think that it's going to turn out well. So as soon as I find some more lamium at the garden center, I'll grab some more of that, throw some more in uh, with the goal of everywhere that you see soil, hopefully that will be lamium leaves eventually. Hopefully it'll be that way by the spring. We will see. I don't know. Well, you know, gardening is always a trial. This I've had this in the back of my mind of something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Technically, it should work, but seeing it like this right now, yeah, it's not looking so hot. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Faith in planting. So thank you all for joining me today. I'm so sorry I don't have a better before and after shot for you, but let's just cross our fingers and hope that this turns out well and the lamium starts spreading everywhere like I want it to, like I'm imagining uh, <laughs> that it's gonna end up. I mean, can't you imagine how gorgeous it's gonna be with lamium as a ground cover, these gorgeous limelight hydrangeas, and then honeysuckle all around. I, I can see it, I just, we just have to get it to work. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.